this video, we're going to take a large Excel file of accounting transactional data and show how you can do quite a, a fair bit of analysis of that data just by dragging and dropping the data onto the report canvas in Power BI without writing a single formula uh, within Power BI. This video actually covers the first exercise in our one day course, Introduction to Power BI for Accountants. The objectives of this particular exercise is to show and for you to understand how Power BI filters and summarizes data and presents results. In this video, we will learn about three ways in which data can be filtered before it is displayed in a visualization. We'll import an Excel file into Power BI, and you'll see how to do that. We will understand how Power BI creates and uses date hierarchies. And in so doing, we'll gain some familiarity with the Power BI desktop user interface and its main elements. So firstly, let's take a look at the Excel data that we want to bring in. This is an audit log file uh, extracted from Sage 50, and it has a total number of rows of 57,492 rows, and it's got 19 columns, including account references, dates, department information, details, net amounts, gross amounts, and quite importantly, the transaction type whether it's a sales receipt, sales invoice, and so on. So this is a file that we're going to import into Power BI. To do this, we'll open a new tab in Power BI, and we do this just like you'd create a new worksheet uh, within Excel. We click New Page, and let's call it Invoiced Sales Report, because that's the report we want to produce. And before we get started, I'll just introduce you to a little bit of the user interface in Power BI Desktop. On the right-hand side, we have two panes. We have a fields pane, which displays the data in your model. At the moment, we have no data, so that is blank. And then we have a visualizations pane that you use to create and modify your visualizations within the report canvas. The big white space in the middle here is the report canvas, and it's the default view you have when you open up Power BI. The little squares here are all the different visualization types that you can select if you want to display data. And when you select a particular visualization, then you get an option to configure the, the values that are displayed in the visual and apply various filters, either at a visualization level, page level, or report level. On the left-hand side, we have different views that we can use. By default, Power BI opens up in the report view and you see the report canvas. We also have a data view, which enables you to explore the tables within your data set. There's nothing to explore at the moment. And we have a model view, which we can use to explore the relationships between those tables. So the first thing we want to do is to import our Excel spreadsheet. Do that by clicking on this Get Data button, or we can also go File, Get Data. It does the same thing. And by default, the most common data sources that you can bring into Power BI are presented first. So let's click on Excel. And we'll bring in this file here that we were looking at before. And we'll choose to import transaction lines, which is the worksheet that we want to import. And we just and we just select load. Now you can see in our fields pane we have our transaction lines table. As I mentioned, we can explore the data through the data view. We can just click on that and see the data in the data view. And we can very briefly explore the data in a similar kind of fashion to which you might explore it in an Excel sheet. If we select, for example, the department name column, at the bottom, it, it says we have 57,491 rows in the table and seven distinct values for our department name. I'll go back to the report view now. What I would like to do is produce a report showing invoiced sales by department and by month and by year. So the first visualization that I will use is just a simple card, and that just displays a single value. Click on the card. It produces a blank selected visualization on my report canvas, which I can move around anywhere I want. I'm going to leave it up in the top right-hand corner. And the value that I want to display in that card is the net amount from my transaction lines table. So I select net amount. And because I've selected the card in the canvas, I now have an option within the visualizations pane to add fields 
to populate that card, I'm going to drag net amount into the field there. What that tells me is that across my 57,000 rows in the table, if I add up all the numbers, I end up with a number of minus 1.16 million. It's a little bit meaningless because it's actually all of the transaction types, invoices and receipts and journals and so on within my data set. But I suppose the first thing to notice is that without actually writing any formula, it's added the numbers all together. And I know it's going to do that because if we look in the fields pane, we can see this little sigma sign next to my net amount. And that tells me that by default, Power BI will summarize that. I can configure it within the visualization here. So I can show average, for example. Again, a meaningless value in the context, but the average value of my transaction lines is minus 20.24 pounds. I don't want average, I want sum. Also within the modeling tab, I can select the net amount and see here we have default summarization. Now here I can choose no summary at all, or I can choose the different options. As I said, it's a meaningless number because actually what we want is the invoiced sales amount. So I want to filter this value based on the transaction type. So I only want to sum the transaction types that are invoiced transaction types. Now, this is a Sage 50 data set, and there are three transaction types that are subtypes of invoices. That's SI for sales invoice, SC for sales credit, and SD for sales discount, which is a discount applied at the time of receipt, perhaps in, in, in exchange for early settlement. So I want to filter that by transaction type, but actually I want to filter the entire page by transaction type, because this is this entire page is an invoice sales report. So... What I will do is I will drag the type field from my transactions table into the page level filters area here. And here I can choose which transaction types. There's a scroll within a scroll here, so it can be a little bit fiddly. But here I see I've got 34,496 sales invoices. I've got 632 sales credits and I've got one sales discount and that's applied my filter I can scroll back up and I can just minimize that but I can see now within the visualizations pane I've got a page level filter set for the for type equals SC SI or SD so I have my total invoiced sales amount to 7.4 million from my entire data set. In my data set, I have a little bit over two years data, so I can always analyze this year compared with last year. But as a total, it doesn't mean anything unless I can slice it by year or by months. So the next thing I will do is I'll add a year slicer to the report so that I can look at my sales by year. To do that, I make sure I have no visualization selected on my canvas, and I go to the visualizations pane, and I select the slicer option. Then I go to my date field. Now, you may remember in the Excel spreadsheet, I had a date column which holds the date of every single transaction in the table. When I import this into Power BI, Power BI recognizes it as a date column and in the background automatically creates four additional columns in a date hierarchy. Those columns being year, quarter, month, and day for every single row of the table. So. What I want to do is I want to slice this by year. So I just select year and add it to my slicer. And by default, it's created this kind of timeline slicer. Actually, what I want is, is a list that I can select from. I can just change the configuration to a list view. And that shows me my list of dates. And now I can select different years. I can select 2017. And I can see I had total invoice sales of 2.56 million. I can select 2018. And I can see I had good growth and sales of 3.78 million. But I'd actually like a slightly nicer appearance for this date slicer. And I can do that in this formatting tab within the visualizations pane. So I have my visual selected, and then I go to the formatting options for it. And what I would like to do is change this under general from a, a vertical orientation to what's called a horizontal orientation. And you can see I can kind of get these squares that I can click on. 
I want to make that as small as possible. He says making it larger. Just in a column like that. That's about as small as I can get it. And I, I'll move it over to the top right hand corner of my canvas. Just a reporting tip here. If you're adding slices to your reports, it's always a good idea to keep them in the same place. What I always do is try and move them over, over to the right hand side of the canvas, um, starting from the top. And now we can see we, we can just click on the different years and it will select the different total in my net, net amount field. Another tip is that I would have summary information at the top of the page and more detailed information further down. So now we have invoice sales by year. What we wanted to see was invoice sales by year and by month and by department. So to view it by month, what I will do is I will add a column chart. Again, making sure that I have no visuals selected, I will select clustered column chart as a new visualization. And while that's selected, I can now see the options I have to configure this. So I have an axis, I have legend, I have values, tooltips that I can add. I just want to populate the axis with the month and the value with the net amount. Again, within my date hierarchy, I can drag month over to axis and I can drag net amount to my value. And that's now created my invoiced sales net amount by month, which I can also slice by year, because what we realize is that as we're building out the report, by default, the, the visualizations are interactive. So if I select 2017, this is now showing, my, showing me my monthly invoiced sales by month for 2017, adding up to a total of 2.56 million. So just a quick note about the filters that are operating on this page. This net amount figure here is being filtered by the year, by this visualization, and by this page level filter that we have, a, have within the visualizations pane. This value here for December, showing 355,377, is getting the same filters applied to it, but this specific column is being filtered within the visualization by the month of December. We can also see that the visuals are all interactive with each other because if I select December now, we can see that my total net amount is now filtered by interacting with this visual. So I've got the filters now acting on this net amount at December 2017 and my page level filters on the transaction type. Just to show you one other thing, many of the visualizations have an option for what's called analytics. And the options available depend on the nature of the visualization that you've selected. But the column chart does have this option and I'm gonna select that. And the options presented are a constant, a min or a max line, an average line, medium line, median line, or a percentile line. I just like to add an average line so I can see which months I was above average and which months I was below average. I don't need to do any formula. I don't need to add any calculations. Power BI will do this automatically for me. I just select average line and add. And now that's created an average line within the visual. And it shows me that in July, September, October, November, and December, I had average, sorry, I had above average in 2017 for my sales. Now, the last visual that I would like to add to this report is a matrix visual. So I can look at sales by month, by department, by year. And this would be fairly typical of the kind of summary that you might want to produce in Excel. So there's an option here called matrix. And again, I select this without any other visuals being selected and that'll create a new visual. And we will see that I have different options now to configure it. I, I now have the option to define my rows, my columns, and my values. For my rows, I want department. I'll use the department name field. For my columns, I have months. So I'll take the months from the date hierarchy. And for my values, I'll select net amount again. I can resize it to bring in all the data. Now I have 
have my simple invoice sales report. At the bottom, I have a matrix showing sales by month and by department. I can slice that by year and it will automatically recalculate by year. I've got the net amount by month and I've got the summary total net amount at the top. Just to explain the different filters and summarizations that are going on, if I select this value here for retail in December, I've got 142,000 of invoice sales in the retail department in December 2018. So the filters that are acting to produce that number, firstly, we have the page level filters. So I'm filtering out all the transaction types except for SC, SI, and SD. We've got the months of December. We've got the department of retail and the year of 2018. And all those filters are acting on the data, which is then being added up to produce that amount.